Hey everyone and welcome to this uh, next episode of Crafting Continued. Uh, I've lost count, I don't know what one we're on now. Um, anyway, today it's less of a crafting and more of a baker noon. Um, and also I'm starting first thing in the morning. Um, but, you know, you get the point. Um, so today I want to introduce you to my sourdough. My sourdough starter and I want to show you how to make a, my quickest and easiest sourdough bread recipe and I'm going to be making it into some bread rolls um, so what we need you need a sourdough starter and um, I'll include a couple of links um, of how to make your sourdough starter um, down below you can substitute probably seven grams or so of um, dried yeast if you would like to uh, you need a little bit of sugar uh, you need some flour I have this lovely Cotswold crunch flour which is which is really nice uh, and you also need a tea cozy shape like a sheep it's vitally important uh, and I'm going to be using a stand mixer with a dough hook attached. Um, <laughs> this is a massive cheat. Uh, lots of people would say that you need to hand knead it. Um, and yeah, yeah, I know, but we've all got other stuff to do as well. And it to make a loaf big enough for a whole family, then you really need to uh, knead for an awfully long time. It's a lot of hard work. Um, so I'm going to start off by showing you how I use my sourdough starter. Um, so it's going to move a little bit closer. Um, so this is, I normally keep my sourdough starter in the fridge. I take it out of the fridge a couple of hours before I'm going to use it and I keep it in this Tupperware tub with only two of the clips down because if you um, th this produces a lot of gas and if you don't give the gas a way of getting out it finds its own way and that's never a good thing. Um, so I'm just going to get a spoon um, so whenever I use my sourdough, I halve whatever is in the container um, to go into my bread. So um, uh, You might notice that my sourdough is quite brown coloured. Um, you'll see in a second. Um, I use whatever flour I'm using to bake with to um, feed my sourdough, if that makes sense. Right, we're just going to move this back a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm just spooning roughly half of my sourdough into my mixing bowl. Yeah, so I've heard that using a wide variety of flours gives your yeast a nice range of nutrients. Um, so um, yeah, this has got bits of rye flour and spelt. Um, and it's got some seeded bread flowers in there as well which isn't always fantastic when you want to use it for something that you're deliberately not making seeded but there you go um, and it has a nice kind of yeasty smell um, at times it can smell a bit alcoholic um, but if you give it a bit of sugar that normally goes away right so I've now severely depleted my sourdough uh, so uh, it's time to top up um, so I'm going to start off with Sprinkling of sugar, and this is very much a um, you know no precise amounts recipe. So I'm just going to sprinkle in maybe a little more sugar than that, probably a couple of teaspoons worth. Um, stir that in first of all, and next I'm going to be adding a bit of my flour and. So I'm just going to use the flour that I'm baking with, so this Cotswold Crunch. I just need to open, which I'll do away from the camera in case it sends a puff of flour into the air, which it normally does. Hey, there we go. Not too bad, not too bad. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I'm basically going to replace about as much as I took. So, I'm going to probably put in around that much flour which will roughly double the amount of sourdough starter that I have um, and now I'm just going to get some um, filtered water um, I think I've seen some people say that you have to use filtered water and others say that it doesn't really matter um, but you know I'm trying to keep my little yeasties alive in here so um, I don't want to give them any kind of chlorine or anything which is going to upset them. Um, and if some people say it helps, it probably does. Um, 
So, and then I'm just going to stir it up till it's all nice and roughly the same texture throughout. I mean, this is a culture. It does like separate out into different layers and it does do its own thing. It's not going to die if, um, you know, there's a bit of extra water in there or anything. It needs enough water, it needs enough sugar and it needs enough flour. And I'm pretty sure that will do for uh, probably until, at least until tomorrow where we'll probably use it again um, or for a couple of days. Um, so now I'm going to pop my lid back on my sourdough and it can go back in the fridge. And as I said, two clips down, two up. And I found that works with this tub, but you might have to experiment um, with whichever one you end up using. Um, so if you're using your sourdough all the time, then it can be worth leaving it out, but um, we find that ours overgrows a little bit and gets a bit too lively. And that's uh, not very useful. Uh, right, so here is my bowl. And I'll try and... So that is my sourdough inside my bowl. Now, um, I've got a big measuring jug here, which has um, kind of rough uh, flour weights on it. And so I'm going to be using this to measure up about 600 grams of flour. Um, you could also look at this bag, see it's one and a half kilograms and do, you know, <laughs> the appropriate amount from that. Um, so I would say 600 grams is normally enough for my family, which is four people, um, to make a nice big loaf that will feed us all. Uh, there we go. That's my flour. So I'm going to st stick that in here. Stick that into my mixer. Um, right, so I'm going to add the rest of the water that I didn't give to the sourdough can go in there and I'm going to put in another sprinkling of sugar and I'm also going to add a pinch of salt over in the far corner there and I'm going to start off just letting it mix like that and I'm gradually going to add water um, I think I'm going to stop filming for this bit because it's going to be noisy and I don't want to be drowned out and you know um, so I'm going to start mixing it I'm going to gradually add water and then I'll start filming again when it's got to the texture that I think you should be looking for Okay, um, so this is just like a few seconds later. I've added about um, 350 to 400 millilitres of water. Um, and it's it's starting to come together. It still looks a complete and utter mess. Um, so I'm now going to leave it to knead and to fully combine um, for probably about uh, five or six minutes. I'll check on it. Um, I'll start filming again when I, it's got to the point that I would say is fully kneaded. And um, I'll show you what it should look like then. So, as you can probably hear, I've got some bread kneading in the background, but um, I also have a little visitor to the kitchen who is managing to not disturb everyone at the moment, aren't you? Yes. Oh no! How am I going to finish filming the video, Millie? How am I going to finish filming the video? <laughs> uh, yeah, the cat gets into everything. I'm surprised she isn't demanding that I feed her. You're not going to demand that I feed you, are you? Are you? Oh no. I'm doomed. Doomed. Anyway, having a cat around definitely makes the time it takes to knead the bread go faster. Okay. So it's been kneading for 11 minutes in, in my stand mixer. Uh, so it's now really, really elastic and can stretch a long way without breaking. Um, there is a test called the window pane test. I'm not actually sure if it will manage to meet that one, but uh, you can see that, it, it, yeah, there we go. You can get it really, really thin before it starts to break. Um, and it's also looking very much smoother and um, kind of generally more dough-like than it did when we started. So I'm gonna say that this is done. This is my proved bread. Um, sorry, my kneaded bread. Um, so um, I'm gonna do what I normally do now um, to set it up for proving. Uh, I am of the lazy persuasion. So what I do is I put the lid down, I get a little bit of oil and use that to just put a bit on my hands and use it to cover the top of the dough. 
and that just stops kind of a, um, a dry crust from forming on it. So I'm just going to cover it nicely up with the oil and now turn the machine off, get a nice clean tea towel and I'm just going to cover the top with the tea towel um, so it can have a nice little nap inside uh, like this. And there we go. So now it's going to sit like that uh, for, um, I don't know, a couple of hours probably. Um, maybe slightly less. Maybe I'll just give it an hour and a half or something. Um, and it will have grown quite a lot more in that time. Um, I might also, it's a bit cold in the kitchen today, so I might uh, try and find a warmer place for it to live. Um, you kind of, the warmer you prove it, the faster it will grow. Um, and you need to deal with it when it's doubled in size so um what do i want to do with it today because it is a bit cold uh i might stick it out in our conservatory which is a bit warmer um and then so i'm going to wait till it's doubled in size and then i'll come back and film the next bit see you Righty then hey so this has now been proving for about an hour it's doubled in size and i'm going to knock it back and then shape it into some rolls um so I'm going to start off, I'm going to put a little bit of oil onto my hands. Um, I find it easiest to um, oil rather than using flour uh, when you're handling dough. Right, so I'm going to push it all down, knock all the big air bubbles out of it. Now I'm going to take a nugget. Uh, and so my method is I flatten it out. Um, I try and get a nice smooth top and then I turn the bottoms into the middle like this and then I try and smooth these together to make a nice flat bottom for my roll and then give it a nice roll there we go that's one roll uh, so I'm going to divide the rest of this up into rolls uh, and then I'm going to stick them back I'm, I'm going to put them into the oven. Um, I'm going to I'm put, turn the oven on for about 30 seconds to warm it up a little, uh, which will work because it's an electric oven. So it's now a nice, um, not hot, but warm oven, and I'm going to leave them for a second proof um, until they've roughly doubled in size again. And then I will just simply turn the oven on, and I will have... <laughs> tray keeps moving. And uh, then roughly 30 or 40 minutes later, I will have cooked bread. Um, Unfortunately, someone is someone else needs to use the camera, uh, or rather, the person who owns the camera that I'm using is going to need to use the camera. So I might not be able to film that. So I'll try and put pictures in, um, when, of of what things look like at each stage if I can't film anymore. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching today. I'll be sure to put in some pictures of the final product, and uh, yeah, I I really like sourdough bread making. Um, shouldn't really be rushed which I've had to do a little bit this morning um, but there you go uh, and I think everyone at the moment a lot of people are keeping sourdough and this is a really really these little rolls will grow into a nice nice big lovely lunch for for us to share as a family so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next week for the next afternoon bye okay uh, here are my lovely 10 bread rolls just before their second proof um, so I'm now I've turned the oven on for 30 seconds and then turned it off so it's a bit warmer than room temperature but not too much warmer I'm going to pop them in the oven um, for another 30 or 45 minutes uh, until they've puffed up nicely and then I'll be turning the oven up to a 180 degrees and this is a fan oven so 180 degrees fan or 200 degrees not fan and I'll be cooking them for probably around 30 to 40 minutes or until they're nice and crusty uh, brown in colour and they sound hollow when you tap on them from below. <laughs> so I'll, I'll include pictures of that later. Thanks for watching.